Welcome back. We're out here in the greenhouse again this morning. Yesterday we were out here getting all of our water lines situated for our compost heater. And I wanted to add to that system there and I wanted to share everything I was doing. Yesterday I was pretty beat after delivering beer off the semi all day. So after work I came out and I started this process of the compost heated water lines and I knew it was going to be a two part video. So this is part two. So we're going to jump right into everything I'm doing with the compost heating water lines and what I'm adding to it. If that sounds interesting please consider subscribing to the channel let's jump through the greenhouse Get the camera to focus on everything here we've got lots of little crops we had taken the shade cloth off this end of the greenhouse allowing a lot more sunlight getting in here getting all these crops popped up before it gets too late here transplanted and stuff these strawberries have been in the greenhouse for about two weeks now. These have grown quite a bit actually and they're showing signs of being well adapted to the greenhouse. Just like everything else, it's been nice and warm in here. We were sitting about 33 degrees overnight for an overnight outside temperature here and the greenhouse was relatively warm at uh, 50, 51 degrees. That's not too bad for an overnight temp. We have a lot of thermal mass in here, nice sunny days. It's been pretty decent weather lately. So we've got lots of components we've acquired lately. Another fan just like we have down here. So lots of little cheap parts, little connectors and four inch connectors, some clamps and stuff. Got a discount battery, <laughs> so it's brand new. We've got some R6, R6.9. So we got a little bit of insulation value for about $25 for this 15 foot roll. So I'm gonna take two pieces together. That is going to be to insulate all of these lines, including four inch ducting or four inch drain tile here. So this four inch drain tile is going to be connected to these aluminum tubes here. So we're hoping that we can get them in the pile without crushing. Once we set the pile all the way up, we'll be able to put our transfer wall there and then it hoops right over all our lines and then we'll be insulated. So we've got our black rubber hose 100 foot wrapped around, well not 100 feet, we probably got 20 foot between, so at least 80 to 85 feet I would say, wrapped around the barrel. And we've got another 100 foot or so, a little under 100 feet on recycled hoses, just rubber garden hoses, find on Facebook Marketplace and stuff like that. So I wanna talk about this real quick and show how we got all of this together. So it's not the cleanest of wraps. We've got all of this rubber garden hose touching and in contact with this barrel. So the compost will be in contact with these lines and touching some of the barrel here. But for the most part, it's going to radiate its heat through and just basically transfer through all of these lines to heat up the water inside. And then that stable water will continue the process and allow a nice thermal mass inside the greenhouse to aid in overnight temperatures and compost heat production. So as you can see, I've got these lines. I mean, these don't look the best, but I was able to use some wire and I'm going to show, I'm gonna wrap some of these. So we are using a 55 gallon drum this time around and I just wanna go through and wrap this side up and just show everybody how I'm doing this. So simply taking the end of my wire here and just running it up underneath the next coil. You can see how this one's kind of loose. This is a return line. The loose ones are return lines going back down and feeding into the greenhouse. So we're doing one nice loop, pulling it nice and tight. And then we're running this up under the next segment, trying to keep it nice and in line. And then we can really heave and get some leverage on that wire so we can get a nice coil here. Coming over to the other side, I'm going to just repeat that same process all the way down this side. So this all should be pretty well situated for the compost dump here. Just a quick overview. I was just using some cable here and I wrapped the cables together to form a cross section. And then I brought it down each side. You can hear tractors and semis going, They're harvesting corn and soybeans like crazy. So I wanted to keep those lines halfway separated. I did mostly pecs on the top and then we've got our rubber hose on the bottom. I gave myself two options for pulling heat. Let's say one clogs, one leaks, one's 
bummed for some reason. I've got two options to run heat from this compost pile. So we're not really relying on just one water transfer system. But I will say now that I've got two options, I've got another power system coming. We've got an experimental little windmill that we ordered that is supposedly able to produce 500 watts and it's always windy out here. So we could pick up some serious energy even when we're not getting a lot of solar activity. That being said, we may be able to transfer some extra heat to a fish pond or to beds in the greenhouse. There's a lot of options once we have the ability to move water. So let me know your guys' thoughts and ideas on heat exchanging with the greenhouse pond and how we could achieve that safely. So I've had a few questions on why we're not using metal to transfer. So we're not using a copper. I couldn't get a hold of any cheap stainless steel tubing. That might be something we invest in in the future to make a permanent stainless steel, nice, large, thick stainless steel so it doesn't get crushed. It'd be like a giant spring that we'd have to wind. So we could make something like that for compost heating. There's a lot of ways to achieve this. And as I said, usually we just heap loops in the pile, loops of this four inch ducting or dryer vent ducting, garden hose. So over the years, we've experimented with a lot of different free and recycled items to achieve all of this free heating. So now that we're kind of upgrading ourselves and buying things and making a more legitimate system to operate, so we should have a little more success. And the reason we didn't use copper, that's what got me on this subject. We don't use our copper pole anymore because I noticed that the compost would turn black and it would start to cook, but right around that copper tube, the antimicrobial effects of that copper really negated the heat right on that line. So we might be able to get a lot better heat without having that impact. All my lines are nice and tight. That rubber hose is pulled in tight, ran into the greenhouse. We're gonna check that out in a second. I wanted to reiterate that we have this super tight. It's all fixed down, it's all wired in. It's not going to fall off or slide down once the compost and wood chips start getting dumped on it. So we have a good system to run for water transfer. Now it's just getting all of our airlines ran and getting that set up without having the compost crush it. So I may have to jump in there and kind of wrangle it up into the pile like I have over the years because we're using a tractor on these massive piles. And over the years, I've shown where I put it together by hand and I'm all looping it together just simply by hand. So kind of incorporating both and doing what I have to to get this set up properly. So we've got everything we need to get this going. All the components, all the pieces and parts. We've got our fencing over here. We've got these stakes. And as I showed, we've got our large transfer wall. So everything is ran into the greenhouse now. All we have to do is DIY up some insulation. We will use that foil faced insulation and then we will end up wrapping that in plastic or some poly to keep it nice and dry. So we've got our rubber hose coming in. So we've got two lines coming in. One is hooked up. We went ahead and blasted water through this line last night. It's got a little dirt in it. Trying to keep this propped up on the rocks so we don't get any more dirt in there. So we tested the lines. This hex connection held water and we pushed water right out the end of our line that dumps back into the overflow. So as all the systems are nice and tight, I've got a whole nother option for transferring water from here, from there. We've got a pump down there operating our little pond here. So we already have a designated solar system to pump water into the greenhouse pond so we may be able to recirculate it somehow and then passively put heat into the greenhouse pond. So we've been doing this compost heating for a while now and I really wanted to give the breakdown of every little piece that's going into this. That's why I threw a part two on here. I didn't want to just wrap up the blue pex lines in the first part video and then you guys come back and see that we've got a whole bunch of black lines ran and you're like what is that? What's going on? You didn't show us so I wanted to show everything, how we got that situated, and now that we've got it all nice and tight, we can run our air lines in, and then all we've got to do is put up our fencing and drop the compost in place and water it in and inoculate it with nitrogen. So we're almost there, we're almost finished with this process, and then we will have a completely free heating system and we can start experimenting with all the little goodies that we've got and acquired 
for the greenhouse this winter. So stay tuned as we've ordered a bunch of little random things for the greenhouse to specifically heat and perform experiments this winter. So I want to thank everybody who's subscribed recently. We've got a lot of you guys on board, so I really appreciate that. You guys make this possible. I'd like to thank you guys again, and I will see you in the next video.